Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. I thought we'd have a look at what's inside one of these LED LCD monitor panels. This is the one I got from the uh, dumpster dive, 27 inches, absolutely massive. It was uh, cracked as you saw in the uh, previous dumpster diving video, but what's inside this thing? Well, we'll find out. And uh, yes, look, it is uh, kind of warped there. Something, uh, yeah, seriously happened to this thing when that photocopier was, uh, or that laser printer was dumped on it during, the, in, inside the, uh, dumpster. What a bummer, but anyway, I've never actually taken apart one of these, um, uh, LCD panels before, really, and this is a lead one. It hasn't got the, uh, cold cathode, uh, fluorescent lamp in it, so it's going to have, uh, some pretty good lead, uh, strips and may, you know, a, a, uh, diffuser plate um, something like that, some sort of diffusion technology to get a nice even backlight on the thing. So I ex expect probably, you know, to, I'm not sure if they have it on all sides, but maybe on two sides like this, they'll have, uh, some lead strips or something like that, and, uh, diffuser plates and all sorts of stuff. So let's, uh, crack this thing open, or before we do, let's have a look at the PCB here. And there's the main chipset on this thing. It's a CMO CM2716A. Not going to bother looking it up, but there's some uh, series termination resistors there, and that comes from the main connector, which comes from the uh, control board. So then, you know, that's the input, and then this uh, must fan out to all the other uh, driver chips, which then uh, go into these um, flat flex cables down here. And they're, they're uh, soldered on with a hot bar uh, uh, technique. So they come across with a hot bar down there and actually press down on these and they and it solders these flat flex uh, strips down onto the board there. Very uh, common technique for this sort of thing. So uh, let's, well, there's nothing much else on the board. There's a little uh, low dropout reg there or something. There's something else here. That's a CMO. CM502. I'm not even going to bother to look these up. Um, not too fussy. I'm, oh, look at that. That looks interesting. Looks like that's been... Ah, oh, look. Has that fried? Has that been fried or has it been reworked? I don't know. Something's gone wrong there. Maybe that... It's what, that's all that was wrong with this thing. I mean, it is actually uh, shattered the panel, but that's maybe why it was originally dumpster dived or dumpster tossed to begin with it's almost as if something's gone horribly wrong with that chip there I think maybe that's uh, died a very sad death I think so maybe yep that's what the reason that this thing's been tossed out perhaps who knows anyway let's not speculate about that some uh, DC to DC converter stuff big inductor here lots of parallel uh, caps here, tons of them, really getting the uh, inductance down there, and uh, there's not much else on the board, so let's take it out and uh, flip it over. One of the interesting things though is this is a pretty darn long board, it's like uh, 55 centimeters long, so you know, um, they, they've really uh, gone to town there, of course, um, you'd have no problems having this um, assembled through the assembly machine usually, because length usually isn't a problem. It's usually height um, inside, you know, certain width inside the uh, uh, pick and place assembly machine. But usually they can do any size uh, length like this. But uh, sometimes you will not, um, some bareboard manufacturers uh, won't be able to make a panel uh, that big. And uh, they, interestingly, I can't see any. Uh, breakout tabs, v-grooving or anything like that, that board looks fully routed on all edges. So it looks like that just that individual board has gone through the pick and place assembly process or more likely they would have done like a, well it's a fully routed board and then they've done like a custom jig, like they would have had, like a, they would have, you know, made a custom uh, uh, plastic jig or something like that to hold the board in place and they would have had multiple channels like this so you know maybe they had five boards stacked up like that and five boards then moved their way through the pick and place uh, assembly machine but let's uh, flip this sucker over and let's see what's on the bottom side well that's surprising folks look at that absolutely nothing on the back there no uh, extra drivers or anything like that 
just a whole bunch of uh, parallel uh, traces running the full length of this thing. So uh, there's got to be uh, some more circuitry on the back of this panel. That chip ain't going to handle everything, folks. You know, I'm not actually sure which order to get this out. There were a couple of screws along the bottom here, but that's it. There's no other screws like along the side down here. It seems to be held in place by some uh, clips. So sort of get in there and sort of lever it out. And uh, it looks like it should just pop out. Well, that's the, uh, that's the plan anyway. Here we go, folks. Ta-da! Ah, ah, pop back in. Bummer. There it is. Ah, got it. Finally. Aha! There's our white uh, reflective back in, I would say. Or is that our... No, I would... Well, yeah, white reflective. I guess they're not going to make it silver. So that's so that the... Uh, light reflects back evenly off the back of that so there we go yeah quite a nice so uh, i'm not sure what that is not sure what uh, material that is probably has a high reflectivity be great for my uh white balance i can set actually yeah i might keep that i'm assuming it's uh pure white it looks pure white to me could use that as a nice white balance card for my camera that'd be neat so we have that and now we have, ah, and this has a nice, I'll get the macro lens out, out in a minute. You won't be able to see this, but that, this has a nice back in, on, and this has an etched pattern on the back of it here. I can feel the etched pattern on it like little, little dots. They are tiny little dots, and these are, so I still can't see the leads in here, um, which is really kind of unusual there they are oh there we go there's our lead strip all the way along the bottom should have known that there's our connector there we go there's our lead connector and there's the lead strip all the way so it's only one side i was, uh, I was wrong i thought it'd be on both um edges but it's all it's coming from the is that the top or the bottom i'm not sure now anyway um it's just coming from the top or bottom that's a really neat lead strip though um Presumably, I'm going to oh, I'm going to take that out. Um, they're obviously not going to be in. Uh, well, are they in series? How many is on there? If you whack them in series and you, uh, you know, three volts per lead, that's going to be an awfully high voltage uh, array. Otherwise, if they're parallel, they have to have a current sharing resistor. And I, oh yeah, yes. Oh no, no, that's silk screen. I'll get in there with the macro. I thought I saw a current sharing resistor for each one. But there's not, I don't think it's on the bottom, so I'm going to assume that they're all in series. Well, we can measure that later. That's going to be fun. If it is, we'll uh, get our, out the high voltage power supply and uh, power this sucker up. By the way, I didn't get the part number on this one, made in China. It's a uh, Chi Mi Opto Electronics uh, brand panel. Whether or not it's, uh, you know, just a rebadged uh, from one of the major uh, manufacturers, I've got no idea. If you've got any details on that, I guess I could Google it, but uh, I won't bother at the moment. If you do have any details on exactly uh, who manufactured this and what plant, uh, please leave it in the comments. So this is our light guide, and uh, these are, you know, fairly uh, simple in terms of their um, uh, construction. I'm not sure of the exact uh, material, some sort of, you know, uh, polycarbonate or uh, something like that. Nicely machined uh, edge here, which goes along the uh, leads at the bottom here. And at the top, they've got a white strip on there, which is the same as the uh, reflective strip, which uh, sits on the uh, back here, which you saw before. This one here, so... Here's our reflective strip, sits on the back like that, and then, uh, of course, the light shines in here, and then it bounces off, well, due to total internal reflection, it, uh, it, it acts as a light guide, and it's reflecting in and out, in and out, all the way, it will bounce in off the top and bottom edges, until it hits all these little dots on the top, which we'll take a look at, and they're the thing that uh, actually reflects the light then out the front, like this. And we can see that on this Dave Cad 
draw in here. We've got our LEDs at the side here, this LED strip. This is our uh, reflective film, that white reflective film on the back. These are little uh, dots. I, I presume they're like uh, chemical etched or uh, something on the uh, back of there. I'm not sure how they actually manufacture the uh, tiny little dots on the back. But anyway, um, yeah, this effectively works as a light guide. So the uh, light shines into here. It'll be the correct thickness and they choose the correct angle lead blah 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 it, to get the uh, total internal reflection in there as best they can so the light bounces all the way around in here and sometimes they'll hit these little dots here well a lot of the time they'll hit these little dots here and then the light goes out the front like that at various uh, angles of course it doesn't just all magically go straight out like that and uh, that's what um, uh, produces the light coming out so this is how they can get a um, an even light coming out across the whole panel from just an edge lit down here and there's multiple ways to do it with um, you know either you have ones on multiple sides or you have like all four sides but I think most of these days only use the one side like this so that's effectively how these things work very simple but then you need some extra stuff on top of here to really like you need an extra diffuser plate and uh, extra stuff on here as we'll no doubt see to then get a nice even diffuse light out because otherwise if you just had this you'd actually see little bright you know spots you'd see all the dots um, if you don't have the diffuser plate and other technology which will be on the top of here and there you go you can see the little individual dots there absolutely tiny and uh, yeah as I said I'm not sure how they're actually uh, manufactured whether they're uh, uh, you know chemical etched laser etched or uh, you know something else I don't know if you get any got any uh, um, info on how they actually uh, manufacture those dots on there please leave it in the comments and then below that we have a nice diffusion layer look at that so um, actually this is where a lot of the uh, technology could be in this uh, diffusion film here you can see it you know it's, it is quite uh, diffuse so there could be more technology in this uh, thin diffusion layer here than in this uh, polycarbonate uh, uh, bit here so I don't know if anyone has any exact uh, details and stuff like that please let us know oh look there's another look at that there's another very, you can just see my fingers, well, it actually turns up much better on camera. Looks like it has lots of magic in there. Timey kangaroo down, spot, timey kangaroo down. This film is very interesting, folks. Look at this. At a really uh, shallow angle like this, it is uh, quite transparent. You can see my watch and my screwdriver through there. But if I move it up, to be directly vertical to it, it absolutely vanishes. And as I bring it down the angle again, very shallow angle again, you can see it's transparent again. But you bring it up, that's like 90 degrees to it, completely opaque. Look at that. And that only works in uh, the, what I'll call the, uh, the Y direction here, like this. If I actually spin it around on the X direction like that, it actually vanishes. No, that's not just a trick of the uh, camera or the light reflection. I can't see that either. So you go over the top and, yeah. So in the X direction, it is only transparent at shallow Y angles like that. Interesting. So it's no surprise that the lead strips are along this bottom edge like this so that is really quite fascinating and no it's not uh, polarized if I you know uh, move the you know watch around like that or anything like that I did a quick little uh, bit of research on this film stuff and uh, it turns out it's called uh, prison film or lens film or if you get it from uh, 3M who's the main uh, patent holder on this stuff it's called brightness enhancement uh, film or BE F, and it's 3M micro replication technology and it basically uh, well it says it recycles the off axis light so as I said before all this light the light source these are the individual dots 
down here that are you know uh, shooting all this light out in multiple directions it just helps channel that and improve in boost the brightness um, if you only got one piece up to 60% two pieces up to 120% so it, it increases the brightness um, as well as um, you know channeling it all directly outwards as you can see, it improves brightness, contrast, uniformity, and energy efficiency. Very vital part of these LCD displays. And that's exactly how they work. Some of it gets recycled back, depending, oh, you're a bad angle, sorry, you're coming back in. And some of it might even bounce outside the little prisms. And that explains why, by the way, that we could actually see through it at a shallow angle in this direction and this direction like this and of course and we couldn't see anything in this direction because they're only uh, manufactured in you know a long sheet like that so the direction Ooh, and we actually have some data as well here's the uh, gain of it and uh, you can see at uh, the larger angles it just completely drops off like this either side of that so there you go those into all your uh, light and optics uh, physics stuff you can have a field day with this and uh, as I said 3M hold uh, like a lot of the patents are on this um, stuff but it seems that uh, some of those are expiring so there's other manufacturers uh, coming into the play as well using their own technology and you can get different uh, types they've got standard on ears, round tip wave you know and they all have various uh, properties I have no idea uh, which uh, this one is, but it is definitely one of these uh, prison films or uh, BEFs. And what's our final layer on here? Ta da! So we're not done yet. There we go. We have three layers of material. I'm not sure that's sort of, that doesn't look to be, that doesn't look like it does anything at all. Just maybe a little extra diffusion layer or something like that doesn't seem to be doing anything special anyway so we've got three layers of uh, diffusion you know slash uh, you know re reflective reactive type uh, material plus our uh, lead panel as well plus our uh, light uh, guide panel as well so absolutely fascinating construction and pretty much what I expected I expected there to be a lot of technology in the uh, in the LED diffusion of this yeah here we go here's where we can see our cracked panel folks hi I can see myself it's very reflective there you go and uh, I'm not sure if you can see those cracks but yeah probably getting some of it in there but yeah it's cracked all up here all the glass is cracked everything oh, I shouldn't run my finger over that sorry yeah all you Apple fanboys getting excited Sorry, I'm not an Apple fan. This was uh, given to me by a uh, fan who uh, came to visit the lab, who uh, works at Apple. So that's why I'm wearing it. And it's kind of, it, it's all right. I like it, even though it is Apple. But uh, yeah, now we can see all our little individual pixels in there. But we've got our cracked, well and truly cracked glass panel. So... Here we go, I can take out the plastic surround on that. Came out very nicely, but you can see how it's all, you can probably see how it's all cracked. Yeah, you can see all the crack marks up there. And uh, we saw that in the previous video, but yep, there's all our, uh, here's our tiny little driver chips. Well, they're actually huge uh, driver chips, but uh, uh, tiny in size, the uh, trace spacing down in there is incredibly small but yeah so we've got uh, one two three four five six seven eight for the uh, uh, x direction and uh, one two three over there for the y and it is interesting to note that uh, there was no extra uh, layer in there that's it that's the front uh, that's the front panel of the thing so the actual panel itself is uh oh yeah i can see the cracks in it now if i uh look at this uh panel at the right angle there we go you can see them all the way down there so this um so the actual uh, lcd panel itself is uh the entire front uh surface there's no way i i expected there to be an extra uh, protective film on there but uh it's not it's all uh it's all embedded and integrated although this film does seem to be an extra layer 
stuck on there. So maybe I can attempt to uh, peel that off, perhaps. I don't know, but there's a lot of layers that go into the construction of these panels, let me tell you. There are, yeah, 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 this could take a while. <laughs> All right, here we go, I got it, I got it. There we go. That's the front. Uh, protective film, some sort of polycarbonate. And yes, that is the uh, top polarizing film. Check out my Fluke 87 as I turn it around. Ta-da! It vanishes. So that's the uh, top polarizing film. There will also be a polarizing film on the bottom of the uh, LCD as well. So yeah, that uh, extra layer on the top here, that'll also be the uh, uh, second polarizing filter on the back. And then if we go in, we can start seeing all of our pixels. Fantastic. Look at that. Ah. Beautiful. That's actually rather fascinating, folks. This is with my Times 10 macro lens, and you can uh, start to see the individual red, green, and blue pixels in there. And they would, of course, uh, this is a TFT screen. They'd all have their individual uh, driver transistors. And then all of this, what looks like uh, purple stuff here, these are all the actual uh, traces leading up to there. So there's, like, you know, a hundred little traces in there going up to your individual um, columns there. And there you go, that's one of the driver chips. Take a look at the trace spacing. I'll zoom in on that uh, in a second. But those, yeah, there's, they're all traces in there, folks. They're all traces. Look at them, all the traces coming out here, wrapping around, going up there, out of here, driving each individual uh, column in this case, because these are the uh, X drivers. So. There you go, Novatech. And there's the part number on that sucker. And look at the traces. My Times 10 macro lens is not good enough to get down there and look at those traces. Oh, I can see some of them. You can see some of them in here. This is where the uh, data's uh, coming in, probably. But all the output drivers for the individual pixels, nah, can't see a damn thing. And it's not surprising, really, because if you do the math, uh, there's eight of these chips. Um, uh, drive in all of the columns, and of course this would, uh, I believe this is a full HD uh, 1920 by uh, 1080 uh, panel, so we're talking 240 traces each one of those chips has to drive. Count them, folks. Oh, I can just see them. Just. If you watch this thing in HD, you can probably just see the individual traces in there. That's insane. So there you go, if I bring that in and out of focus, you can just see the individual traces, absolutely tiny. Woo! And you can see how these flat flexes are all uh, sandwiched inside the uh, uh, polycarbonate, I presume uh, polycarbonate uh, layers or some such in there. You can see the traces going around there and then right up there to the row driver uh, thing. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. So you can really see those traces on the inside of the panel down in there and then it comes up and there's our there's our row driver chip. You can just see the number down in there. I don't know. If you can find info on that I'd be very surprised but you never know. You never know what Google... I want, anyway I wonder who uh, Novatech is. Whether or not they're just, you know, manufacturing the uh, flat flex assembly or whatever, or uh, they have more to do with it, I don't know. And you might ask, well, what is that pattern up there doing? Absolutely nothing, folks. I don't know. Maybe they're just doing some uh, uh, um, equalization to put some extra copper in there, so I don't know, it doesn't curl or do something else funny. I don't know, they've taken a few liberties there, that's for sure. And my first guess would have been that they are uh, test pads, of course, but uh, you can't uh, access them because they've got the film on top. So, um, I don't know, maybe um, uh, during the manufacturing phase before the final film is put on the uh, top, perhaps? That's all I can think of. And if we have a look down in the bottom corner down here, Check it out. You can see the individual traces going in, or it's actually, 
it's really hard but uh, you can you can see the individual oh, my screwdriver is massive here see the individual traces running up and we should be able to see the uh, red green and blue individual uh, TFT transistors and there you go folks looking through my uh, microscope really difficult because I've got my camera with the macro lens right up to the eyepiece of my microscope uh, not fully equipped for this sort of stuff but you can see the individual red green and blue pixels in there not a problem at all beautiful and there's more of them down in there I've got to uh, shine my torch right across this thing at a very shallow angle there to get this shot but that's amazing look at that there you go that is the bottom corner of the panel you can really see that quite clearly now individual red green blue filters and uh, the driving tra transistors are all integrated so you can go into all the theory of how these TFTs actually work and there's you know slightly different uh, manufacturing uh, uh, processes and things between ma manufacturers they all they're all going to have their own uh, bit of secret sauce in there somehow but you can see those traces coming in from the bottom there and then driving the uh, the rollers on the bottom there it's it, it's on an angle it's on a 45 degree angle here of course and uh, but it, it is rather it is rather fascinating Oop, I've moved it let's just move across and uh, there you go sorry about uh, the movement here I'm just trying to hold my camera and tripod in place while uh, focusing this microscope but that is incredibly interesting folks and on the front side of this you can see that they've got some sort of blue gunk around the outside whether or not that's sort of, uh, part of the uh, bonding process for all the various uh, layers I'm not entirely sure and on one corner of the panel here look at that looks like we have some sort of test connector now I won't actually go into detail on how the uh, liquid crystal uh, TFT panel itself actually works. There's plenty of uh, tutorials and with uh, great graphics and everything out there to explain the operation of uh, these things. But uh, and in terms of how the liquid crystals work and all that sort of thing. But basically, what we've uh, got is the uh, diffusion uh plate at the back the white light as we've uh, seen it generates like an even white light at the back of this panel and then as we saw on the um, underside here we have a polarization layer so that actually creates uh, polarized light light which then enters the uh, tft panel itself and then the tft panel the individual uh, pixels in there red green and blue they have red green and blue filters well they're not the pixels three of those red green and blue elements make up one uh, pixel or one picture element and then when you apply an electric field across each uh, pixel element a red green or blue uh, one of those then you can individually uh, turn on or off the polarization of the light passing through the individual red green and blue elements and so uh, you can actually uh, block or allow the light to come through those red green and blue filters and then we've got a final polarization uh, filter on the top here and then that's the light that ultimately comes out you can turn on each of those things so all it is is uh, either allowing the light to come through from the backlight or not for each one of those uh, uh, 1920 uh, by uh, 1080 for a full HD screen red green and blue picture elements and it's you know it's remarkable just the density in the technology in these uh, panels absolutely phenomenal as you uh, saw in terms of the uh, trace spacing and things like that well I tell you what these LEDs seem to be very very efficient folks they're uh incredibly bright that's not just my multimeter uh, diode tester uh, doing that you can really see the pattern emerging now that two three just lit but that's absolutely incredible from my uh, multimeter and that lead bulb was quite a mongrel to get out to it was all stuck down with a uh, double-sided adhesive tape on there and uh, but this is a very very long board folks just keeps going and going and going and going and going that's one hell of a strip and for those playing along at home 61 centimeters long and you can see the uh, 
traces on the back of that. They've got a pattern on there. I soldered a couple of uh, wires on here just so that we can uh, have a go. There's basically two uh, ground pins in there, basically, plus uh, four uh, signal pins. And there we have it, folks. I've got one strip fully lit up. That's at 10 milliamps using my Keith Lee uh, 225 current source. Let me uh, put constant exposure on that. And let me uh, change the wick a bit. Let's go down to... That's 8, 7, 6. That's 1 milliamp. Oh, sorry, that's... Uh, there we go. We're 1 milliamp there, folks. That's not much at all. I mean, let's even go down less than 1 milliamp. That is 0 0.1 milliamps. Should still be able to see that. And, of course, if I turn my uh, lab lights off, that might help a bit. But you can still see, hopefully, those lit up on camera there. And that's at 0 0.1 milliamps. Unbelievable. So let's turn it all the way back up to 9 0.99 milliamps and uh, that is super duper bright I like it and uh, of course it takes a reasonable amount of voltage to do that and uh, but I can do that because I've got my uh, I've got my Keithley current source over here which I'll show you so of course it's really handy having this uh, Keithley current source not only can you dial in the uh, constant current you want but you can dial in the maximum voltage there as well so I don't know what the maximum current is I mean that is 10 milliamps and that's quite bright but obviously not bright enough to uh, do the panel if I had the data sheet for these things I'd know I mean I can go up to that's 90 milliamps that's pretty much uh, the maximum that my Keithley uh, current source can go up to but that's incredibly bright all right so what happens if I put 20 milliamps through this thing and then put on the light guide with the diffusion layer on there. Obviously I haven't got everything lined up. It's not perfect. I'd have to put it all back in there. Eh, it doesn't do much at all. That's pretty boring actually. There's the uh, back side of the diffusion layer down there. But yeah, anyway, I have to do some better uh, experiments with this thing I could like take out individual layers so if you want me to see it do a like a separate video on that I uh, I probably can because I I've now got uh, all the stuff to experiment with that and it could be rather interesting taking out the individual layers and seeing what effect they actually have on the uh, on the total uh, diffusion of this thing so anyway that's a quick look inside one of these modern uh, LCD uh, monitors of one of these uh, LED uh, backlight one so lots of technology in the uh, diffusion layers and all that sort of stuff that that technology has advanced a lot if you remember sort of uh, notebook LCD screens from uh, you know many years ago or not that many years ago only 10 years ago or something you know you get the bright spots where you could see the well they didn't have lead technology back then of course they uh, would have the um, cold uh, cathode uh, stuff but you know, I mean, uh, you would see the hot spots and everything on the side and it wasn't really nice and even and diffuse like these are. Uh, um, you know, you take for granted that uh, you just get these nice diffuse things these days. Well, spare a thought for the technology that goes into all these uh, layers and stuff. And if you do have data sheets on uh, uh, all this uh, layer material and everything, please uh, post it because that would be... Uh, fascinating and there's tons of technology which of course you know 30 years of progress or something has gone into uh, LCD technology like this just absolutely incredible the tolerances and you know full HD and ah it's just absolutely amazing stuff but anyway I hope you like that and if you want me to play around uh, with it some more please let me know all this uh, diffusion stuff and if you want to discuss it jump on over to the EV blog forum if you like Teardown Tuesday, you know what to do. <clears throat> Catch you next time.